All right, this is an interesting point in the series. Hey, what's up, nerd fan? This is your boy, Gashan. I want to welcome you to Enter the Nerd. Today, we're going to be talking about WandaVision episodes 5 and 6. I'm going to get those two together because I figured there'd be some interesting things that happen after the development at the end of episode 5, which if we all have watched it, by the way, this is a spoiler, uh, kind of a spoiler review. So if you haven't watched any of these episodes or any of the season, do not watch this. So uh, at the end of episode 5, obviously, we see the arrival of Quicksilver, not just any Quicksilver, um, Evan Peters Quicksilver from the Fox franchise of X-Men. So obviously this was done most likely to symbolize that, hey, we've got the property, so we're just kind of trying to flex that muscle for you, right? Now episode five was very interesting for a lot of reasons. It was Vision, you know, coming to terms or actually, you know, finally starting to break out of the control and realize that Wanda is doing things that are pretty sinister. Um, overall, what I like about this series is um, the chemistry that Wanda and Vision have, um, the actors do their job. They do their job very well in this show, I'll say that. Um, and they definitely bring some charm to the characters. And I also like the interpretation of some of the source material. And I know the people who read this have paid attention, right? Um, this worries me a little bit, not what they did, but I see Evan Peters here and a lot of people go, oh yes, finally. Quicksilver, and yes, I do want the X-Men to come into uh, the MCU, and but it's very convoluted because I have to know how. We will eventually, like, does that mean, you know, how they're gonna explain mutants? And is this really Quicksilver? Because I do know they said that Evan Peters was supposed to be playing Mephisto. And if you look at certain things in episode six, it kind of is pointing to that. Like, I bet this actually might not be, you know, Pietro at all, it could just be you just pull the rug out from under us, a little bait and switch, and this is not really Quicksilver at all. This is just uh, Mephisto, and eventually, just like in a comic book storyline, you know, um, Tommy and Billy are actually just fragments of his soul, and then he reclaims them, and that makes Wanda go even crazier, and eventually they get reincarnated as Wiccan and Speed. So if it goes that way, got it. Um, that would be kind of cool. Um, but I just really want to see how they're really going to handle the X-Men. Because it's not enough just to bring them in. It's also the how, and I get it. It's going to be a whole multiverse thing. But it's like, are mutants just going to exist? Are these people that are inside of Westview, are they all going to get tainted by Wanda's energy? Which brings me to my next point, because they seem to be going with that with Monica Rambeau. Which, you know, some people are like, oh, that's kind of cool. But for those of you, probably a lot of you that have never read the comics, and don't know what she's based off of. She's a hero that's solely based on her. Her powers were not, didn't come from someone else. She didn't inherit them from someone else. Um, Carol Danvers is not like her aunt, like a like an aunt figure. Like uh, she didn't look up to her. Um, and I see what they're gonna go with her. They're, I, I remember in that episode, they're like, oh, well, you know, um, Captain Marvel could have taken her down too. And it was like, we're not gonna talk about her. I see, she's probably gonna be mad at her because, you know, she didn't come and save her mother or whatever. It's like, and then eventually she's probably gonna inherit either the Captain Marvel um, name or they'll give her Photon, which apparently Maria Rambeau had, or Spectrum, because they even hinted at that when she was touching at the force field. Either way, it's like this character is still like, a they're making it, this character derivative, even though she was actually original in the comic. And I feel like it's just, she's still not getting her proper shot. Uh, the actress is playing the hell out of her. I have nothing wrong with what she's bringing, as much as she can bring to the role what they've written. It's convincing. I'm glad they made her have some fighting skill. She's also intelligent. Um, she's got connection to some astrophysicists, or, you know, or, you know, who, you know, is believed to be Reed Richards. And some people are thinking Blue Marvel, but it shouldn't be Blue Marvel because Blue Marvel is supposed to be like on the moon somewhere. So I think that'd be best saved somewhere else. So I'll, I'll be betting on Reed Richards because they're trying to bring in the Fantastic Four sooner than later. But still, as far as Monica Rambeau is concerned, I'm worried they're just gonna make her a derivative because they already messed her up in the beginning. I'm gonna go with that. They've already messed her up from the Captain Marvel movie. And this is the time to really try to flesh her out, make her own thing. 
but I know when Captain Marvel 2 rolls around, it's going to revolve around their connection. And they, in 6, in episode 6, it kind of like made this theme of grief, which I kind of like, you know, her mom died and then next year I know how Wanda feels and it's facing off, you know, losing someone and maybe doing things irrationally or thinking, not thinking clearly because you lost someone. I actually like that theme. That's a cool theme to run with. Even if that wasn't something that was happening in the comic, that's actually, it's still a cool theme to run with that's, you know, that's deeper than this. And obviously death is very heavy in this. Some things that I wouldn't have thought they showed, like when they showed the little kid getting the yo magic and then uh, yogurt from the shark and then just, you know, not getting what they want until they died. And even showing like the dead vision and uh, dead Quicksilver, like when uh, Wanda was really seeing what they really look like. That was, it's, also, it's pretty dark, but I like it. It adds some gravity to, to the show that I, I really like. Jimmy Woo, I'm glad they gave him a bit of a fight scene, but his portrayal still bothers me because he's a very cool character. And right now I still don't see him being the one that leads Agents of Atlas. Maybe they can change my mind as this goes forward. But the MCU right now, I like a lot, I like a lot of things about this show. The storytelling isn't bad, like in terms of it being what it is. However, as a person who knows these characters beyond the show, it does make me a little worried about what they're going to do with um, like I told you, like Monica, the entire X-Men. Like, how are they really coming into this? Um, are they gonna bring back everyone from uh the recent x-men series i hope not like i don't want to see sansa gray i don't want to see that alexandra ship no can we get somebody that actually looks like storm michael fassbender would be great they it can age him up a little bit he's only about like 40 they gotta age him up a little bit just so that could be her father because he's great james mcavoy is great um nicholas holt is beast was great not really sold yet on the cyclops not really sold yet but whatever they could they could work that out and obviously you know they want to bring in wolverine eventually but still just mutants in general are they going to just pop up is she going to cause them i guess we'll see they might not get to all of that here but eventually they are we know they are eventually and that's fine but um as for what's going on between five and six i like the fact that they have like you know uh wicked and speed they're growing up fast um they're getting their powers um they're becoming integral to the story as well I like that whole scene when Vision was coming out of the out of Westview when he was kind of deteriorating, like indicating that his existence is being based off of what Wanda's doing. And it also points to the whole Mephisto thing because you hear how Pietro was talking, it's very sinister. It's like, oh, you know, you can't bring people back to the dead, you know. He seems to know a little bit too much about the nature of how things are going. So it makes me think that it might be Mephisto. I made a point in and showing the MCU uh, Quicksilver. So I wonder, is there gonna be like a bait and switch going on here? Overall, this is not terrible by any scale, but the MCU sometimes plays very hard and fast, not sometimes, a lot of times plays hard and fast with source material and goes away that's kind of weird. And I get it, if you haven't read the comic, you're like, ah, doesn't matter to me. However, so many characters have some really, really interesting stuff. I like the interpretation so far of like just the overall source material, it's just certain characters feel like I'm not gonna get there just do based on the trajectory that they're on right now. And that's just based, not just based off of this, it's based off of like what they did with them before and who I know them to be from the source material. That's pretty much it. But these two episodes were actually entertaining, except I wish that the reason why Evan Peters, Pietro was in there wasn't just because, oh, you, you know, you don't wanna see the same person twice I, I wish it was a little more than that i wish they hinted a little bit more at the multiverse which is something else like may, maybe he isn't ma imagine if he just wasn't pietro and he just it was like you kind of remind me of my sister from where i'm from you know man she just manifested and pulled him from the universe like i i feel like they should like you know really went into that rather than just making it happenstance but whatever we will see what they'll do later on so yeah i, I try not to get too easter egg laden but just trying to figure out like what how were these episodes were they good and about if the future of this stuff seems like it's bright and i think this is obviously gonna lead into multiverse of madness i think wanda's gonna lose her mind by the end of this okay that's cool I, I, i'm down with that and i'm dr strange will have to be the one to stop her um and let's just see who else comes out here and let's just see if agatha harkness or agnes is if, if she's gonna play a big part in this too and how this links to the rest um obviously they're gonna put like monica rambo is gonna be like the sword leader which i wish that wasn't a thing because then we missed out on abigail brand like 
and we can have Monica stand on her own and maybe go with some team that she actually is with, like the Mighty Avengers and flesh out some other people, especially since Blade is coming. And I think they're kind of hinting at maybe a Blue Marvel. So yeah, that's what I think about that. So let me know what you think. If you love the episodes, let me know how you love them. If you didn't know, or you have some more questions about maybe some source material stuff, let me know in the comments below. And you know, besides that, just answer the nerd.